So my tip for ELD students is a connection circle or learning circle, um, which gives an opportunity for students to speak in an authentic way, and usually we connect it to the content area that we're teaching. Like I said, I told you we were gonna start with our circle. What I do um, is have a sentence starter for each question, each prompt, as well as having some visuals around the room. Who has more power, more power? Macbeth or Lady Macbeth? You just have to say the name, you don't have to say why, until afterward. And then we do follow-ups with more explanation of student opinions. Lady Macbeth told him to kill, but he's the one who killed King Duncan. She's responsible for oh. the murder. So you disagree? One way to really show appreciation for those students that are taking risk and using that language is to give a simple praise, like, great job, I like how you said this. What's done is done, yeah, that's a quote from what Lady Macbeth said. Nice work, nice job with the quote. Mm -hmm. Nice use of the vocabulary. She used the word deed, remember? Deed means... Action. Action, right? It lowers their effective filter a little bit, which is when a student is learning a language, they tend to have their guard up a lot more. And so when you do it in a setting like this, it's it lowers that stress and it makes them more comfortable and they'll be, hopefully be able to translate it into other classrooms as well. Uh, my tip is focus primarily on the warm up. Uh, where students are able to access whatever we do, they can access the warm up either with scaffolding at their table or with by talking to their peer. And the warm up is always connected to the content that we're teaching or the language function. And the question is on what day will the weather be sunny and on what day might it rain? So, again, all the answers are here. You can talk to your partner, do whatever you need to do. You can look at yesterday for help as well. It might rain on Saturday. Number of Heads Talking is the name of a structured language practice where students get the opportunity to talk amongst themselves about the topic we're discussing or the question. It might rain on Saturday. And then they know we're going to come back together and give a response, one person from the table. Awesome, all right, let's see who's going to be responsible for talking right now. Who is this? The nine. The nine. nine. Yes, sir. You are the nine, awesome. Go, Diego. The weather will be sunny on Monday. It might rain on Saturday. Awesome. Some teachers tend to slow down, and then the, the students tend to slow down as well, and then kind of get lethargic. Where if you keep moving quickly, they'll stay with you. I mean, they they have knowledge, and you just need to find a pathway for them to get it out. Well, my tip is to really use the narrative, um, their narrative, their stories, to access the grade level content standards. How do you help? So I want you to think about who do you help? Do you help your mom? Do you help your teacher? Do you help your little brother or sister? Can I write, I feel helpful? No. I can? I show him how to take the bus. So it can be as simple as students are reading a short paragraph about an experience they may have had about someone else, um, and we use that as a mentor text, and then they're able to use that mentor text to then write about their, themselves. Um, and what they write they can read and so now they have something that they can read in English that they understand what it means. Whenever I have a new student I always start with uh, having like a circle and introducing ourselves so that they feel comfortable and then introducing the student where they're from, what language they speak um, and then I always connect them or try to connect them with a student that speaks uh, the same language or is from the same country um, and then that student really takes them around, takes them under their wing, um, goes to the cafeteria, shows them where the office is, shows them where the nurse is um, and helps them to just build that relationship so they feel comfortable at school. If there's not a student, either I pair them with a teacher or I personally walk them to class. It's a really big school. But they're coming from countries where school was very formal and a lot of times their teachers were not supportive of them and they have voiced this several times. So you have this real um, great opportunity to tap into that relationship with them and to make them feel comfortable in the new culture and to know that you're here to help them in any capacity that they need. A good tip is making learning and vocabulary very visual and very tangible for students. Will you define your word first? There's lots of different ways that it looks. It looks like a word wall um, so that students can always see what we're talking about. They don't have to have it memorized. Um, if I'm teaching a new vocabulary word, there'll always be some sort of graphic or graphic organizer that goes along with that vocabulary word. Um, it looks like students acting out new terms and new vocabulary and new topics um, instead of just writing them down on a piece of paper. Students are coming from all different backgrounds, all different 
um, levels of language learning and it's important to me that they can express what they know without having to necessarily have memorized the English language or the English words, especially in a science classroom. All right, so my tip teaching newcomers is to collaborate with the Welcome Center. Um, the Welcome Center and the liaisons are great. Um, they help us um, reach out to families to build relationships. Um, they can help with truancy cases, figure out why students are coming to school. Um, they do a summary of students when they first enroll that's accessible by reaching out to your teacher leader. Um, and most importantly, they help us build um, and communicate success with families. I know this is a really simple tip, but Every teacher, I think, should stand outside and greet their students as they come in. They really just need to know that somebody is there to care for them. So um, I've learned in a few different languages how to say like, hello, or see you tomorrow, or um, things like that. And that really helps just develop that safety net that they have when they come to school.